doing promotion at Bad Boy. And um, to me, that was just my way, good way of getting in the door and not having to be like stable and, and just like at the office all the time as to what I thought like, a, you know, normal internship was, which is being at the office and having the hours that you're there and it's like, that's it, thank you, go home. I felt like um, with the promotions department, uh, street team to be exact, I was able to be in the office, you know, and then do stuff around the office and then after hit the clubs and hit the, the concerts and hit the road and, and, and different things of that sort and, you know, and be around what was really happening, you know what I mean? And the industry parties and the uh, showcases and the seminars. And, um, and that allowed me to not only be in New York, but to travel around the country and um, do promotional tours and, and things of that nature. So um, being at Bad Boy, uh, Rockefeller had started up and a friend of mine, Ray Ray, was, um, he actually was at a, a, a the label that Nori was at. Um, I forgot the label it was. But um, we had a promotion account with him. And long story short, we went to go collect our check. And he was like, Ray Ray quit. He um he quit today. He was like, quit? He owes us a check. And he was like, well, he went to work with this company, Rockefeller. And I had already known Jay and Bame just on the, on the street level of seeing them out and about. And I knew what they were about. I knew what they were uh, about to embark on. So I was like, oh my God, this is perfect. And we ran and we found them and we begged them to put us on. And it took a little minute and we had to like start over and prove ourselves. And then once Jay and Dame saw that, you know, we were like definitely about this promotion thing, they uh, they gave us a shot, and then that eventually led to um, the A and R thing. But yes, to answer your question, I absolutely left Bad Boy uh, at its height. I felt like I, I I didn't help really build that label. You know, like it was already on fire. I just came in during the midst of it all, and Rockefeller was starting from the ground up, and I wanted to be a part of a company where I felt like you know I helped actually build the brand or just just be a part of it. You know. And I, I always was a huge fan of Jay, from him hearing him rap with Jazz and, and Big Daddy Kane and, and things of that sort. So I, I made the jump quick, fast. The transition to Def Jam um, happened as soon as we, technically, technically happened as soon as Rockefeller did the deal. You know, at first we were with uh, Polygram, and uh, which was on priority, I believe. And um, from there, from the second album, we did the deal. Well, they did the deal with Def Jam. And um, Def Jam, they gave them, it was a joint venture. So obviously they got overhead and we got to be, you know, set up camp headquarters in the office. So um, we got our own office because Dame always wanted to be, you know, his own entity. So, but there had to be a liaison with, with Def Jam. And um, I'm not gonna lie, every chance I got, I, I, I thought, I looked at Def Jam as like, you know, I was at Rockefeller, but Def Jam was like, kingdom come like it's like ah like it's where the gods were you know what I mean? it was what what i was what i grew up on and it was you know everything from ll cool j to to everybody else who was on there and even though run mc wasn't on there you just always thought of them as because they were part of the management and you think of russell you think of Lior, you think of all those things so I, I i took advantage of every time rockefeller needed something from def jam records i was a guy i had my hand up like i'll go over there i'll go to the office i'll go get that and I literally developed a relationship with every single person in that building. And eventually, uh, thank God, we end up merging in a sense of where, uh, you know, Universal or Def Jam moved into this building that they are and they acquired two buildings and then Def Jam moved in and then they, they, um, they kind of just, you know, wanted all their joint ventures to move in with them. So like Murder Inc. was here and uh, Rockefeller was here and Bloodline and just anybody they were in business with for the most part moved in the building with them on a different floor so i again being so close to them i stayed with them hand in hand dealt with the promotion department radio department video department every department and then um eventually def jam i mean rockefeller end up selling themselves selling the company to def jam and everything kind of emerged and then jay became president and i then moved over from like a rockefeller employee to uh, you know, legitimate Def Jam Universal employee. I, I definitely always thought Jay was honestly the best. You know what I mean? I, from, from the beginning, and I'm clearly not saying that just cause like I, I was at Bad Boy when at that time, you know, everybody probably thought and still probably sometimes thinks that, you know, Big is the best or one of the best. And for sure he is one of the best. But at the time, I just always thought there was something special about Jay and I felt strongly about that. 
and to have the chance to go and work with him and be under him and you know uh, be a part of that camp was something that it was it would have been an honor and a pleasure for me so I, I took advantage and I'm you know I always I sought out for it and I made sure that I achieved any goal I set myself out to do so from that time I always felt this is a guy that I think is going to be you know one of the biggest people in the business I don't know maybe it's from rapping rapping or leadership or from entrepreneurship like whatever it is this guy has it and he just happens to be a damn good rapper so um yeah so I felt I felt the same uh, moving over and him taking the presidency, I knew that would 100% work because whether they admit it or not, all artists respect Jay and, and, and like him to a degree. You know what I mean? Even if they don't have a relationship with him, even if they don't like him, they respect him and what he does. And I felt that being in a part of a company like Def Jam that was driven on aggression and just hot rappers and rappers and artists in general, R&B and hip hop and who would just like work their way from the ground up and they were aggressive and they were hot and they were different and they were unique and they led like they led this this um this this culture of hip hop you know what i mean i felt i always felt def jam with the, the ones who did that I, I thought that jay being the president of def jam it, it doesn't say like that says it all like this is the guy who helped was a part of one of the one of those artists who helped build this company you know what i mean and um and, and has grown to a certain level as to where a whole bunch of artists respect them and love them and, and just even wanted his guidance. And he was cool, you know what I mean? You can't forget that cool factor because a lot of artists can't run record companies. So Jay just had all those those qualities and amenities that I think it takes to to run, you know, uh, artists, ego, ego, artists with egos and stuff like that and, and that sort. Yeah, I absolutely know that moment. You know, all my Jay-Z moments, nah. Um, when I knew he was like, just, I mean, the thing that solidified, I, I, I'm assuming what you're asking, that made me know like, wow, this guy is like incredible. He, um, um, and it may be simple, but back then this was like a big deal. Uh, as we all know, if you do a deal with a clothing company, with uh, a jewelry line, sneakers, anything, nine times out of 10, you have to actually wear the product, right? Uh, I remember Jay did his Reebok deal and he almost wasn't going to do it or whatever if he only had to wear Reeboks. And there was no disrespect to the sneaker or anything. It was just like, I'm going to wear Airs or I'm going to wear Gucci sneakers or I'm going to wear this and that. You know what I mean? So it was like, uh, I don't think I could do it. You know, if anybody else, you know, that would have been like, are you nuts? Like a sneaker deal? Like I'll wear these sneakers as long as I have to for as many hours as I have to for and say it and talk about it and he got the deal and I think he probably had on Reeboks a minimal <laughs> of the time that he was supposed to you know what I mean like uh, any given day you see him in some airs or some Adidas or some shell toes and I think from that moment it just like just sitting back from the outside looking in I'm like this guy is crazy like I don't know he's crazy like he's incredible like how do you negotiate a deal and not have to wear the product, you know what I mean? But um, that that was one of the early moments that, and that was you know a long time ago. And then from there, the, the 20, 30 times over, I've seen things, you know, just like that. But imagine on different levels, and and those deals have turned into two hundred million dollar and three hundred million dollar deals, where he, for the most part, always benefits.